أعوذ بالله من العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الأشياء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شأنه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة صلوات Our topic is إدخال السرور على المؤمن and originally the what Imam Zainul Abidin عليه السلام has mentioned in his uh, discourse on rights رسالة الحقوق حق من شرك الله به وعلى يديه the right of the person who uh, by whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you happy. So some people who do good deeds by which other people get happy, this is a great ibadah, great worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we discussed in our past uh, sermons. It is not only worship, it is one of the greatest worship, a form of worship that you can ever do. If you make a mu'min happy, it means this act of making him happy in whatever manner you do it, of course, it should be in halal manner, as, as, as we said it earlier. So when you do it and somebody gets happy, his happiness is originally Allah's happiness. Man sarra mu'minan faqad sarrani wa man sarrani faqad sarra Allah. This is what the Prophet has said. Whoever uh, makes a believer happy, he made me happy and who made me happy, he made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. So the purpose of your worship, your ibadah, your prayers is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the best form of worship, ma'ubid Allah, Allah has never been worshipped better, in better form than making other people happy. So subhanAllah, look, this is, this is what, what uh, originally if Imam is trying to teach us from the beginning to the end of this book. Risalat al hukuk the discourse on rights. So he is speaking on different rights to make us understand that if we ignore the rights of people around us, or not just people, around, you know, we have things that have rights on us. Even actions have rights on us. Our body parts have rights on us that we have discussed all those rights that Imam has mentioned in his uh, book, Risalat al-Hukuk. So he is giving us this message. If you don't give all these rights to people, 
no matter how much you worship, no matter how much you uh, apparently come and offer your prayers, no matter apparently you look a good uh, Muslim, this is not enough. This is not going to help you unless you be good with other people. Being good with Allah, how can you prove that you are good with Allah and Allah is happy with you? So if a mu'min is happy with you, Allah is happy with you. How easy is this? Now, look. So make people, make mu'mineen, make other believers, make your brothers, your neighbors, you know, make them happy. And this will prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also happy with you, inshallah. تبسم المؤمن في وجه المؤمن حسنا. You just smile. You see a mu'min and you smile. This smile by itself is a good deed. You didn't do anything. You didn't spend any money. You didn't spend any time. But this action, this act of smiling on the face of a mu'min is an act of worship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward for this action. And of course, as we have discussed earlier that uh, making somebody happy is a very wide and very comprehensive topic and subject, how you make somebody happy. So usually in our society, there are certain things which people do. They are good. You send somebody, for example, in his birthday, you send him some, some flowers, you send him some card, you send, give him a, a, a message of, of congratulations, making him happy. It's good. You can do more. These are, don't make it a business uh, relationship. Make it a relationship which should be based on sincerity and love and affection and spread this love in the society and it start with your family so we should spread this love your actions your actions will cause somebody to be happy or angry look now we are talking only on this this uh, aspect of this action that you're making somebody happy. There is another aspect of it. Hurting somebody's feeling. Ida'ul mu'min. Of course, this is opposite. Islam is emphasizing on making people happy. And Islam is forbidden from making people feel uh, hurt. Don't f don't hurt their feelings. Whatever you see in in hukukun nas, the relationship between the people by you know with people, any relationship that we have with other people has these two aspects. And all the sins, go and see the list of sins. You will see those sins are sin. Why? Because any action of us is hurting somebody's feeling. Basically, this is the basic of those so many sins. For example, backbiting. For example, bohtan, you know, accusation. For example, lying. All those things, originally, they are haram, they are forbidden. Why? Because they are causing ida al mu'min, hurting mu'min's feelings. Don't hurt a mu'min. If you do this, it's not. It is not just a sin, regular sin. It is major sin. While he is not there, if you beg biting, and he he knew that okay, you were. Uh, speaking uh, ill 
in his uh, absence, of course, he's not going to get happy with this. His feelings will be hurt. And this will become a sin. You didn't do anything against Allah. You didn't do anything against Quran. You didn't do anything against Kaaba. Again, apparently religion and uh, this. But you did originally. You did against Islam. Why? Because a mu'min has a, in, a, in, you know, great importance in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, those things are which are wajib and those which are mustahab, again, they are based on this idea that you should make a mu'min feel comfortable with you, feel in peace with you, feel uh, happy with your actions. So ithal at surur, this is important. Mustahabbat, you see so many mustahabbat, uh, starting from doing salam to inviting somebody at your home for a dinner or lunch. This all is based on what? This concept of making people happy. So the life is a meaningful life. You should live a meaningful life. So Islam always emphasizes on these aspects of akhlaq, of manners, and being kind with other people, being nice with people, smile, greetings, uh, inviting, you know, and helping, and in, in whatever manner you can be, you know, you can show your kindness to someone. On the other hand, don't be rude with someone, don't hurt somebody's feelings, don't break bite, don't do this, don't do this. So look, so Islam wants a society which is connected to love strongly, with kindness. You cannot find in Islamic teachings, go and read the Quran from beginning to the end, anywhere, any act of rudeness, leave alone brutality. Somebody becomes brutal and becomes oppressor and becomes violent. He has, has no room in Islam. You cannot find anything like this in Islam. Yes, there are certain punishments that the Quran has mentioned for such people who are oppressors, for the oppressors. Yeah, this is because Quran is constitution and, Qur and Quran should mention, uh, you know, uh, such punishments for those who commit such things against humanity. So Islam cannot be kind. We cannot be kind with uh, the enemies of humanity. We cannot be kind with terrorists, let's say. Can we? Can we be nice with, with, with those terrorists who are doing what you see today in this world? Every act of brutality. So now compare Islamic teachings, Quran, and the two leaders, the divine leaders of Islam, see their character, see their behavior, see their ethics, ethical teachings, and then now see these people. It looks that purposely they are doing it to defame Islam. Otherwise, what justification they have? What justification? Killing people? Okay, you might say, yeah, Quran says kill, kill these people. Who? Not you. It is justice. It is, Quran is mentioning the punishments. It is constitution. And every constitution have punishments. It's not you who will go and give the punishment. So authority should do it. There is a procedure for it. There is a system for it. So Quran is a constitution book. It's not for you. You go and start doing what Quran is saying. It's not for everybody. But usually Quran is talking about more akhlaq and kindness and, and niceness. 
and rights of people. Okay. Let's say that you have showed us in Quran that kill, not you kill, the people who kill it, innocent people should be killed by the authorities, by the government, which is legitimate government. It's constitution, as I said. Okay. So this is the rule. This is the law. Quran is given. But we cannot take the law in our hands. Even those authorities who can, can punish the criminals, who, who can punish the terrorists, those also have restrictions how they should kill. Look, the killing of the killer in Islam. The killing by the authorities after bringing them to justice. If the judge said, yes, he is the culprit, he is the criminal, and he should be punished, those punishments also have rules and regulations. In none of them, nowhere, you will find burning is part of punishment in Islam. No. Not at all. So this is something new. You see, burning somebody alive. What is in Islam? Show me. Show me. Even with wrong interpretation, show me. Of course, you cannot show me any, any wrong thing that they are doing. Nowhere in Islam, but you might say, okay, uh, this is in Quran, and they give a wrong interpretation. But burning, no, not even with wrong interpretation, you cannot show burning in Islam. Burning alive. But now today, you will see this. In the name of Islam. This is the greatest proof and the best evidence that these people are against Islam. They are enemies of Islam. They are purposely doing things to defame Islam. So they are not enemies of other people. They are enemies of Islam first. They are enemies of Rasulullah who strongly, strongly, you know, um, forbid burning people. Not people, burning houses, burning properties. Burning is forbidden totally even as a punishment. No burning in Islam. This is only Allah's right if he wants to do it. Otherwise, he is also Arhamur Rahimin. He knows what to do. But this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can burn no one and can burn no thing. But this is going on. So this is important, brothers and sisters. That we should educate people in whatever manner and whatever means we can about Islam. You see, hundreds of thousands of sites, or maybe I say millions of sites, they take such clips and forward it to other people, email, WhatsApp, and Facebook, and uh, you know, other media, social media. They are using it to show that, look, these are Muslims. These are, this is Islam. Oh, alhamdulillah, this is, this is uh, at least something good that Muslims, all Muslims, whatever, you know, differences they have, but they are united against terrorism. This is good. Whenever this happens, Muslims, the majority of Muslims, speak against such brutal acts. But what I'm saying, why should we wait until such something happen like this, and then we condemn it? We should condemn those teachings which lead to such situation. The extremism in Islam. 
And it should be very, very clear that this is Wahhabism. We should be clear about it. That Wahhabi teachings, the Salafi teachings, whenever they are, have no tolerance. No tolerance. And just seeking violence, hatred. So these teachings should be stopped. And we should be careful about such people who teach such hatred against anybody. Islam is the best religion of peace and tolerance. No religion can show such a tolerance as Islam has showed throughout the history. Islam, I'm not talking about Muslims. Don't get confused between Islam and Muslim. Islam has, has, has taught us, go to the teachings, original teachings of Islam. And that's why the Prophet knew this, that what will happen after him. He knew what will happen after him. Remember this. And this is, I think, the, the uh, most important message we can give to the world, if they hear it, you know, if they can hear us. That the Prophet knew that what will happen after him, people are going to use Islam for their own uh, interest, their own agenda. So he, in the last days of his life, as his last will, you know, a person when he goes it, from this world, he is departing from this world and he is leaving something important behind, he writes will. He gives the will for his property, for his business, for uh, his organization, for his work that he has done in his life, so that the work should not go in vain and should not perish, should not uh, be destroyed. So he, to protect his, his mission and his work, he writes a will. Islam was a mission, Islam was a hard work of all prophets starting from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Musa, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To protect this hard work after him, remember, as I said, this is the, the most important message a brief message we can give to the world. So this, to, Im, to protect this hard work, the prophet, he mentions something important in his last words as his will. And will is always the most important words of somebody in his whole life. He says, I am leaving behind two things. Quran and Ahl Bayt. He didn't say Quran only. Quran is Allah's book, Allah's word, his constitution, is the source of all kind of knowledge, the source of wisdom. It is everything for us, everything for Muslims. It is everything for us, right? But still he knew that people are going to misinterpret Quranic ayat. They are going to get wrong messages from uh, some ambiguous ayat of Quran. So he said, I'm leaving not Quran only behind me. I'm leaving Quran and someone who will give you the knowledge of true Quran. True knowledge of Quran, true message of Quran, who will teach you Quran. Don't interpret Quran by yourself. So nobody can use Quranic verses for his own personal agenda. Why? Because there are protectors of Quran. There are teachers of Quran. There will be people who are going to give the true meaning and true message of Quran. And he said, they are my Ahlul Bayt. They are my family. So I'm leaving two things, Quran and Ahlul Bayt. So if you see anywhere people are talking about Quran without Ahlul Bayt, Remember that they are going to go into wrong, di wrong direction and these kind of people are going to produce such people that you see today in the world who are making all these 
who are doing all these wrongs in the name of Islam. Why? Because they have, they're using Quran. Oh, Quran says this. Okay, if Quran is saying this, show us where this meaning that you derive from Quran has been mentioned by one of the Ahlul Bayt, those household of the Rasulullah, who were uh, part of uh, the will of Rasulullah. When Rasulullah left two things, you cannot say, I will take one. If you take one and leave the other one, here is it's the start of going astray. That's why the Prophet in the you know in his will in the end says, if you if you be with these two, ما أنت مستكتم بهما لن تضلوا بعدي أبدا. You will never go astray if you remain with these two. That if you leave one or leave both of them, you will go astray. So brothers and sisters, Islam wants us to, to establish a beautiful, a peaceful environment, in our, you know, starting from our house or starting our, within ourselves. We should be in peace with ourselves, inside, peaceful. With the invocation of Allah's name, your heart feels peace. To be in peace with Zikrullah, with worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in peace, keep this peace within your family, in your neighbors, in your community, in your country, and entire globe. This is what Islam wants us to be. And if you do against this, and you, anybody uses Islam by doing any, anything against peace, he has nothing to do with Islam. Rather, he is against Islam. As I gave you the example of today what happened. Nowadays, what had, you know, going on, burning has no, no mention in Islam at all in the history. So this proves that they are planning, they are planning to defame Islam. They want to do any brutal thing which make people hate those people who are doing it. And their purpose is to create hatred towards Islam. But Alhamdulillah, Islam is Islam. If you go to the original sources, you will find that there are conspiracies behind whatever going on in this world today, especially the ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, those people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability and strength to follow Quran and Ahlul Bayt and to be able to convey the true message of Islam to the world. And may Allah punish those people who are doing such brutal acts in the name of peaceful religion of Islam. May Allah destroy them. May Allah, uh, may Allah clean the earth from such brutal people. In the Hassan Hadith, wa ablaw al ma'ad kitab Allah ya Rabbi Allah min al Shaytan al Rajim Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر